Number 32, explain why the ionization constant Ka for Hi is larger than the ionization constant for HF. Okay, so this will be an explain uh, question. Basically, we have to write in either diagrams or words. So this is basically just a theoretical question, but the, the question is basically, why is a Ka value greater for Hi than the Ka value for HF? So there is a simple answer, and then there is a more a complex answer, right? There's always an easy way out, and then there's the underlying information that makes it a little bit more challenging, but it's just kind of visualizing what's going on. So the easier way is, remember, uh, Ka values is ionization constant for A, which is acids, right? The higher the Ka... In general, the higher the Ka value, that means that you are more acidic. So your acidity will increase. So that's just a general rule here. So the higher the value, the higher acidic you are, the more you're going to dissociate into your products. Now, HI should be sending off signals because HI is one of your six strong acids. Da -da -da -da. Hi, HI, right? Hi there. HF didn't make the list. It's not a strong acid. So since by definition, HI is a strong acid, and HF is a weak acid, didn't make the cut, we automatically know that by increasing the acidity would increase the Ka value, the dissociation. Remember, Strong acids will dissociate 100%, which means that no HI would exist anymore. It would exist as 100% uh, H plus and I minus, the products that you make. HF, though, does not dissociate 100%. So it's a not 100% dissociation. And remember, dissociation... Just means to break down. Break down into ions. Break down into ions. The charge, guys, right? So you're still going to have some HF at the end of the day at your equilibrium. You will have some H plus and F minus, but you also will have some of the original acid. In a strong acid, that doesn't exist. This goes bye-bye, and you have all of just your products, which are your two ions. Okay, now for, we're going deeper down, you know, or as they say, what is that called? We're going, going deeper into the iceberg? Something like that. But there's another reason why that we can explain. And that comes from our knowledge of binary acids. Now, if we look on the periodic table of... Um, where these elements are, right, in terms of binary acid. And by the way, binary acids just means that you only have two elements. And if we're talking about, um, if we're talking about acids, one of them has to be an H, and the other one has to be just some other element. So I have two elements here, H and I. I have two elements here, H and F. So they're part of the binary acid. And the trend is, is that as you go down a group your acidity will increase. If we look on the periodic table of where I is and where F is, F is at the top and I is down here, generally speaking, right? Because you have CL and BR, but then I is down here. So as you go down the trend, your acidity should increase, which is another reason backing us up that, you know, HI is a stronger acid. But now, this is because of what's going on in terms of atomic radius. As you also go down a period, your radius will increase. So if F is up here and I is over here, F's radius, and hold on, let me just make this a little better. F's radius, the size of the atom, would be like a little dot, and maybe I'll do this in blue. 
But I's radius would be very, very big. Now, what does that have to do in terms of acidity? Good question. If I have this ion, right, if, basically if I have these two molecules, we'll label the blues as the atoms. So remember, F is, F is uh, a little dot, right? And then we'll do, actually, actually, where should I do this? I think I'll do, I think I'll do it one on top of each other. So maybe I'll say that this is HF and then this would be HI. So F is a little dot. I is a big element, right? Now here comes the H. Let's just pretend that H is this little green dot. So H would be maybe like this, right? Now remember, H in it is an H. So it's got to be the same size as the other one, right? So here it is. Whoa. Okay. Now, where is the center of the fluoride ion? Well, it's right in the middle, right? Boop. The center is right here for the iodine. And remember, these are bound by covalent bonds. That was a couple of chapters ago. So I'll just show the bond here, right? In theory. It's a, it's a small bond. But if I look at the HI bond, just because I got to get to that center, it's a way longer bond. So, which one has a greater attraction? Two things being really, really close together or two elements being farther apart from each other? Think of it in terms of relationships, right? If, you're, if you have like a best friend, right? You're very, 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 very close. But if you just have an acquaintance, you're not as close. You're farther apart. So, this hydrogen is very close to the fluoride. They have a tight bond between the H and the F. But in terms of HI, since they're farther away from each other, they're not as close. It's like a eh bond. So we'll say, you know, not tight. <laughs> they're not tight. Not tight bond. Meaning close, right? So Acidity is basically the ability for that hydrogen to go bye-bye. But if your hydrogen is very close with the fluoride, do they want to leave each other? No, right? So for this one, how easy for this hydrogen to leave? It's very easy because that's all the way farther out, but it's much harder for this hydrogen to leave because it's so close to the fluoride ion. So since this hydrogen, you know, this guy is farther away, it's easier for the hydrogen to leave. And if it's easier for the hydrogen to leave, that's the definition of an acid, right? The definition of a bronsted lowry acid is that hydrogen to leave, right? You lose a hydrogen, you donate it. So the easier to leave, the stronger the acid. And that all comes from the closeness of the atoms. The bigger the radius, the farther apart the hydrogen's going to be. And the iodine's like, eh, you can go. Goodbye. And that's it. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? I think so. Chem is fun. I really hope I'm portraying that in these videos. <laughs> but anyway, I hope this, I hope this question uh, makes sense to you. And these concepts are going to be coming up throughout the whole chapter. And on, you know, standardized exams. So if you guys are taking like AP Chem, um, you know, you got to know these concepts. So good to know. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you all in future lessons and have an awesome day. All right. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.